Welcome to the Savor Digital Digest. I'm your host, Jeremy, for this episode, and I have my wife, Felicia, here. And we want to bring you some more civilian cooking for your living history events or provide you another connection to history at home. And that's something we like to do in our home is pull recipes out of period cookbooks from the time period. And one of my favorites is the Kentucky Housewife that was published in 1839. And what we're preparing today comes right from that book, and it's called a fried beef steak. So the first step of that was actually getting a half inch round sirloin and it states in the Kentucky Housewife that that's one of the best cuts of meat and then to pound it out. Uh, not to beat it into rags, it's very specific about that, but you want to tenderize it some and then leave it in a dish of water for a bit. It doesn't say what a bit is, so we've let it go for about 15 minutes. Uh, it provides a little bit of juiciness. So we're going to take the steak out and we're going to sprinkle it with some salt and pepper. Now I'm going to prepare the steak and then Felicia, once the steak is cooked, is going to prepare a gravy for it. So I'm going to take care of both sides. Now we got that seasoned and we dredge it in flour. Before we started this preparation, I actually got some lard going in a pan. Yes, actual lard and this is real lard. We actually rendered this down last night together. So we have real pork lard ready to go and it says to make sure that it's boiling hot. So we're going to take that over and get this fried up. Now when you're putting something in to fry, make sure you lay it away from you. Boy, listen to that sizzle. You want to watch for the popping lard of, and grease, of course. And the Kentucky Housewife says to let this cook until it's a really nice light brown color on the outside. So we're going to have just a couple of minutes on the one side and then we'll give it a flip. So we've got a nice brown color on both sides. I'm going to say this is done. That looks great, that smells great, but we're not done because the Kentucky Housewife continues this recipe with a gravy to make for it. It's pretty vague in the ingredients. Uh, it's basically just kind of a look and a feel. So Felicia's gonna take it from here. I'm making the gravy. She has some more experience on that side than I do. The instructions don't really say what to do with the lard. So we dumped most of it off, but making sure to keep a little bit just to keep all of the really yummy bits from the bottom. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and cook up some onions to go into our gravy. We're going to cook the onions until they're nice and translucent. So it looks like our onions have cooked up. Um, I'm going to actually dump them off and add them back into my gravy later. I personally have found that that works really well. So, if you don't mind. And those onions are going to have some of the flavor from the bottom of the pan in them. Okay, can you hand me some butter, please? We're going to get that started. And then maybe a little extra. That's probably pretty good to start. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get our butter melted. So once your butter's melted, you're gonna go ahead and add some flour. And the flour is gonna, you're gonna add flour until it becomes almost paste-like. And that's gonna be what's gonna help thicken your gravy when you add some um, ingredients later on. We're just going to add it a bit at a time. Don't want to get too much. And this will also help so you don't end up with lumps. Got enough there? I do. Okay. So if you look, you can kind of see that this looks like a paste. And what you're going to do is you're just going to cook this for a little while. Um, it's already kind of brown from the skillet, but you, normally you'd cook it till it's brown. Um, and what that does then is cooks the flour so you don't get a raw flour taste in it. As you're uh, cooking the paste, you want to kind of move it around the bottom of your skillet, making sure you pull off of the bottom all of the good bits that are left behind from your fried steak. So now that our flour's darkened a bit in color, we're going to go ahead and add some cream and deglaze the bottom of the pan. 
and then we're just going to keep stirring that until it thickens. And then we'll add our onions back in and we'll have our gravy. You want me to pour it in? Sure. Tell me when. A little more. So now you're just going to cook it until you see that it starts to thicken more than what the cream is normally. Um, I just gave it a taste and I decided I think it needs a little bit of salt and pepper and then we'll add our onions back in. You ready for some of that salt? Yeah, that sounds great. Do you want to just add mm -hmm. a little bit? Let me know when. That's probably good. Toss a little bit of pepper. So if you look at it now, it's thickened quite a bit. So now you can add your onions back in. And really, this is a really simple gravy recipe that you could make and put really any herb or spice that you want to into it um, and pair it with whatever dish you want. So he's added the onions back in. We've still got a nice thick gravy. So we're gonna go ahead and just let that cook for a little bit. So some of the flavor that the onions pulled off the bottom of the pan can cook into your gravy. So now as you see, our gravy's actually gotten a little bit more of a brown color from what the onions had picked up from the bottom of the skillet. And it looks like it's about done and the onions have infused their great flavor into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and spoon some on our steak and we're gonna give it a try. We have the steak cooked. The gravy you made looks amazing. Let's get in there and give this a try. I got a little crunch there with that crust on. All right, grabbing that one. Are we ready? Let's see how this is. Sure. Mm. That is delicious. <laughs> it is. You got the beef. There's a little bit of that pork in the background. That gravy, amazing job. It's creamy. Thank you. It's nice and thick. It's got good flavor. There's some crunch from that flour crust that we put on it. Again, this is from the Kentucky Housewife that was published in 1839. And you might recognize this because this seems to be country fried steak. So I encourage you to make this at home, make this at your next living history. It's a warm, filling, delicious meal. And this is home cooking comfort food right here. That's why the Kentucky Housewife is one of my favorite period cookbooks. Thank you for watching this episode of Civil War Digital Digest. I hope you enjoyed it. I know we enjoyed providing it to you. I also wanna say thank you to the Waterloo Area Historical Society for giving this great location to provide this episode to you. If you like this episode, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and go support us out on Patreon. We'll see you next time.